In this tutorial, I will go over the steps needed to upload a dual recording into Zwift Power. The first thing to do is open up your profile in Zwift Power. Go to the Analysis section. Go to Create New Data Set on the right. Once you're in here, select the .fit file from your Zwift activity. There will be a drop-down list of all of your recent activities. Select the appropriate one. You can write in manually which power meter you used. You can also create a drop-down list in your profile. You can do this later on. It just makes it a little quicker for every other time you do it. In my case, it's the Kicker V5 in Zwift. And then you can select which activity you want to assign this to. And now you can select your dual recording. In my case, I'm using my bike's power meter on my Garmin computer. If you're using Garmin, then you'll need to download the file from your workout. So if you go into Garmin Connect, you can select your workout. Once you're viewing it, your, work, your workout details, you can click on the gear icon on the top right, and then select Export Original. It'll export it in a compressed zip file. So you'll need to extract. I've already done this. And then you'll see your .fit file. It's important that you have a .fit file to upload into Zwift Power. It's the only file type that's accepted. So if you're using a different app that has a different file compression, you'll need to convert it first. I use a, an open source freeware called 7-Zip which uh, has a lot of different uh, file compressions that you can convert from. You can select the appropriate operating system for your computer, and they have some tutorials and help files there to help you uh, do that, and it's fairly straightforward. Next up here, uh, if you're using Training Peaks or another app, you can also export files from these apps. So in Training Peaks, if you select the workout, and then you go to uh, File, and then you can see the uploaded file here. If you click on that, it will extract or ex, uh, export that file. In this case, it's a .gz file, .fit.gz, which won't work. So you'll need to use the converter to convert that to a .fit file. Once that's done, you can go back into Zwift Power here, select the file that you want to upload, and then you can uh, write in which power meter you're using. I've created a drop-down list, so I'll select SRM Garmin. And then you can also select whether you want this to be a private or a public file. So if you're using this for performance verification, you want to make sure that everyone else can see it, select public. Or if you're using this just to compare your power meters and see if there's any discrepancies or any issues with your power meters, you could select private. We'll click on Create Data Set. Takes a few seconds here to upload everything. Once you upload it, it will show you your Zwift file, and uh, in my case, the Garmin file I kept writing afterwards. Um, and so you can delete all of this extra information. It's usually easy to see the end of the ride, or if it's a race, there's often a sprint at the end, or the power drops. We can just select or highlight that part. Um, there will usually be a small discrepancy in the timestamp as well, so we can fix this. In this case, if I hover my mouse over it, I can see that it's only two seconds. Sometimes it could be as much as a minute, a give or take. Um, so you might have to do a bit of trial and error there to figure out how many seconds it is. You can see on the uh, right underneath there on the graph how many seconds it might be. Uh, in this case, it's two seconds, so I'll just write two second offset, and now you can see that it's uh, brought it together. Um, and then we also want to delete any extra data, uh, unnecessary data. So if you look on the top right here, you can see how many seconds into the data file we are. So right at the end here, we can see that it's at 2,800 seconds. And uh, minus the offset, I'll write 2,798 for the Garmin file. 2,800 for the Swift file. Now you can see they end at exactly the same place. And then if there's a longer warm-up on your, for my, in my case, the Garmin file, we can also delete that. We can see here that this starts exactly at 21 seconds. That's when the Zwift data starts. Uh, and so I will uh, 
subtract the offset, so we'll do 19 seconds here for Garmin. Now you can see they started exactly the same time. If we reset, all we see is the actual Zwift race file here. Um, then you can also scroll down here. You can well, you can highlight sections if you want to look at the difference. It will show you here uh, the difference in your highlighted sections. Um, you can see how many seconds uh, that highlighted section was, 2 minutes and 20 seconds here, uh, what the power differences were during that uh, section here. Uh, you can also look and see what uh, the difference was in heart rate, if there were any differences, or in cadence between your different cadence sensors. And then at the bottom, you can see your critical power on the power duration graph here. It's a logarithmic graph, so you can see your sprint or your long distance of power. And then you can also see any discrepancies all the way from one second to 60 minutes. If we look at, say, my 20 minute power here, you can see that there was a five watt difference. Uh, slightly higher on the Garmin file. Sometimes this could be due to a mechanical loss through the drivetrain, so it may be lower on your uh, trainer. You can also see the uh, details from each data file at the bottom, the dates. Uh, which file it was. Um, once you've saved this, if you go back into your profile, all uploaded dual recordings will then be saved in this analysis section. So if you click on this, you'll be able to now see uh, the, that power file right there. Hopefully this helped. Uh, if, you, uh, if it did, please like the video and um, subscribe to the channel. Thank you.